The HE-162 is one of the first jet fighters players can get in War Thunder. Let's check it out. As the tide turned against Germany in World War II, the Luftwaffe was increasingly in short supply of pilots and aircraft. Constant bombing by the Allies was a massive problem, and there were differing opinions on how to try and counter the Allied bombing campaigns. A project called the Emergency Fighter Program was launched, with the goal being to get a new defensive fighter into the air quickly. The political infighting was epic, and could be a movie, or a series of movies. But the long story short is that the winning idea was a concept for a cheap throwaway plane that could be built quickly and in quantity, and simply discarded once it wore out, rather than spending any resources on maintenance. Heinkel's design won, and it ended up being produced in an astoundingly short period of time, just over two months between approval and the prototype's first flight. It used a jet engine model that wasn't needed for other projects, and it was constructed largely of simple wood and some cast iron parts. It was light, fast, and agile, but also difficult to fly, and the early plans to use quickly trained teenage cadets to fly the thing were very quickly abandoned. After some design flaws were worked out, the first examples started arriving in operational units in February of 1945. The 162 was pressed into action as quickly as possible, with its first known combat sorties taking place in April. It was a quirky plane with unusual handling, flown out under desperate conditions, but it still had some innovations. It was the first single-seat fighter fitted with a standard ejection seat, but it also suffered structural problems since the wood glue that was used in some of its construction wasn't properly evaluated and ended up being corrosive. Whoops. While the HE-162 was an effective fighter, the strategic situation was just beyond hope for Germany at that point. Roughly 125 of them reached operational units, but they spent most of their time on the ground waiting for fuel that would never arrive. What we get in War Thunder is the HE-162A2. This is a jet fighter in rank 5 of the German air tree, with a battle rating of 6.3. It's worth mentioning before I proceed any further that how this plane is represented in the game doesn't really square with how most primary sources describe it. In particular, its medium speed maneuverability seems to be considerably worse than how it's been described by pilots who flew it and allied technical evaluations performed after the war. That said, this is what the snail has given us. Germany suffers, I guess. Anyway, as this was one of the first jet fighters ever built, there aren't any advanced weapon systems or features or anything like that, and the plane doesn't get any external loadouts. Your armament is a pair of 20mm MG-151 cannons with a total of 240 rounds of ammo, which rarely lasts as long as you want it to. You get the usual selection of 20mm German ammo belts for this gun. My preference is to use either the Stealth Belt or the Air Targets Belt. Both of them have lots of Minengeschoss ammo, which is really strong and can take down targets with a very small number of direct hits, or even blow off a wing on a glancing hit. The flight performance of the HE-162 is… unique, and if this is your first experience with a jet fighter, there's going to be a huge learning curve compared to the 109s and 190s that you've been flying. The acceleration isn't great and all of its other performance metrics are directly linked to your airspeed. Below 400 km an hour, the maneuverability is terrible, the rate of climb is awful, and energy bleed is below average. However, once you get up above 600 or so, that's where the HE-162 really opens up. At higher speeds, its maneuverability is quite good, the rate of climb suddenly goes from shit to gold, energy retention gets easier, and the acceleration doesn't really drop off until almost 800 kilometers an hour. The real issue is that it just takes so much damn time to get up to those speeds at the start of a match, going from a dead stop out on the runway. 
but once you get the energy up, every area of this plane's performance gets noticeably better, and honestly, it's like a whole different plane. Now, there are still some major factors to consider, though. The biggest problem this plane has is that at medium speeds, between like four and 600 kilometers an hour, super props will destroy you. They can out-accelerate you, outpace you in a climb, and fly circles around even your best turns. I really can't stress this enough, but success or failure in this jet is frequently going to come down to, you know, the simple concept of managing your airspeed. Now, another consideration is your engine throttle. You can push it up to 108%, but your engine's going to overheat really quickly on most maps, so use the extra throttle very sparingly. 102% seems to be safe most of the time. The last thing to mention is your fuel. The game has fuel loads at 7 minutes and 20 minutes, with nothing in between. Most of the time, 7 just won't be enough, and 20 is just excess weight. If we ever get a fuel slider or more presets, things would really improve for this jet if it could take off with about 12 minutes of fuel. Maybe someday. Flying the HE-162 into air battles brings some significant changes to gameplay style compared to the high-tier props that have come before it in the tech tree. In short, just like some of the other early jets, get ready for some really slow-paced missions, especially the opening couple of minutes. I've found that the best thing to do is to try to push sideways after taking off to build up some airspeed to around 500 kilometers an hour or so before starting your climb. Your goal here is to try to be above 600 or so with at least a little bit of altitude before you start engaging enemy targets. If you climb up for bombers, you're probably going to need to sacrifice a lot of speed in the climb, so try to make sure that you're not getting jumped by an escort. Generally speaking, though, speed is more important than altitude, and frankly, it's more important than almost anything with this plane. And it often just takes too damn long to get your airspeed back if you try to climb up to like 5,000 meters or something. The good news is that if you focus on low to medium altitudes, say below 3,000 meters or so, you can use the 162 for really effective boom and zoom tactics. Its twin cannons don't have a very high cyclic rate, and they're not super easy to use. But if you can score a couple of hits with the Meningoschoss rounds, you can take down targets in one pass most of the time, and you may not have to double back even against a bomber. If you do turn in for a more traditional dogfight engagement, try to make sure that you keep an altitude advantage over the opponent, and be very careful not to expose yourself to any super props coming in from above you while you're engaging this other guy. The combat flaps can give you a little bit of a boost in a tight maneuver, but just make sure that, you know, you keep in mind that it's going to cost you some airspeed to do so. That said, you can throw the combat flaps out up to around 700 kilometers an hour. Now, if you get something like a late model P-51 on your 6 within like 600 meters or so, you're basically toast. And this plane isn't great at defensive flying in a dogfight. So, you're going to have to try and maintain an offensive posture at all times. Positioning tactics will end up mattering a lot more than air combat maneuvering with this jet. And if you end up overshooting, or if you miss your shots in an attack pass, don't hesitate to just run away and get some distance before trying to turn back for another go. The 162's main strength is in its high-speed performance, not medium-speed turn fighting. Visually, I absolutely love the look of this jet. Always have. To me, the HE-162 kind of looks like a flying squirrel or something, and it's got a really unique shape with that split tail, those small wings, and the hunchback engine mount. There are three paint jobs available for it in the game, and all of them are pretty good looking, so it's a big A-plus on the visuals for me. Landing the 162 is actually kind of tricky, at least at first. As I mentioned before, the low-speed performance is pretty awful, and that includes the engine response, so you're going to be landing with a pretty high throttle setting until just before you touch down. 
don't try any zigzagging on the runway to like bleed off the last bit of speed because this thing will flip over sideways and explode very easily. You can safely drop gear and landing flaps at around 350 kilometers an hour. The cockpit in this jet gives you some great visibility, even with the engine up behind the cockpit. But, well, the visual detail on the interior is just awful. This is a very old cockpit model and sorely needs an update. It's easy to fly in VR, but the low res painted on instruments and stuff really just kill the immersion for me. To close out on the HE162A2. This jet has very high maximum speed for its BR. It gets Meningashos ammo. It's a small target in air combat, and its flight performance is really good once you get the speed up a bit. However, its engine isn't very strong. Every aspect of its performance is hot garbo at low speeds. Its supply of ammo is tiny. It's literally a jet fighter made out of plywood, and it doesn't take damage very well. The final verdict on the HE-162 is that this jet is difficult to learn, but if you can get the hang of it, it has the potential to be a really strong boom and zoom fighter. The gameplay will be very slow paced most of the time, but it's still a very fun jet to fly, and honestly, it's one of my personal favorites. As always, thanks for watching.